you know, that's the challenge for existing big brands is they've got all of their equipment and their process running to, to change that and on stuff that, that still has years of usable life left. <laughs> Heather from Satisfied Snacks, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. We're going to chat today about, about manufacturing. Mm -hmm. right? And I know a lot of people watching at home or in their offices are either thinking of launching a business that they're going to have to use manufacturing or they're in manufacturing now and mm -hmm. have a big headache, mm -hmm. but people do it. Mm -hmm. You have an interesting take on manufacturing with the product, but before we get into it, what, mm -hmm. what is the product all about and, and, and what do you do? Sure. Um, so we've just launched a new range of snacks where we've taken the healthy ingredients of a salad and turned it directly into an intensely tasty, crispy snack, but without any of the normal wheat or corn or potato or starchy ingredients that normally goes into to crispy snacks. So if you think about it, it's normally either sugar or starch mm. that um, provide the durability and strength and crispiness in snacks but there's a number of um, nutritional disadvantages to them um, and, it, and one of the reasons behind um, increasing obesity is the increasing um, consumption of highly processed um, refined carbohydrates. So um, we've come up with an all natural but patent pending way to, to take super healthy ingredients and turn it into a crispy snack. So we get um, really powerful flavors as well because you don't have any of those bland wheat or corn or potato ingredients kind of drown out the flavors of the natural natural ingredients so they're called they're called roughs they're packaged in a, in a nice um, infinitely recyclable metal tin um, and yeah that's that's a product so healthy tasty snacks tell me a bit about the manufacturing process behind behind the business I guess what um, started us off on this idea of manufacturing ourselves is that although our product isn't very difficult to make it's um, different from what everyone else has okay. um, and so it's not like we could just turn up to a cookie manufacturer and say here's our supremely tasty cookie recipe you know make us 50,000 um, people would have had to have bought in lines and equipment to, okay. to do it and so we just thought well if we're gonna have to um, you know do that anyway we might as well do it ourselves and um, also there are a couple of quality control things and we just thought as soon as we you know, send it off to a contract manufacturer, we'll lose control of that. So we thought as, as we're going to have to scale up the business in terms of sales anyway, mm. we might as well use that as an opportunity to also scale up our manufacturing and then really keep control of the quality and make sure that things are, are done properly, that we can, um, you know, because the, the thickness of the snack affects how crispy it is. People really like the crispiness. So we yeah. need to keep control of crispiness. And the only way to do that is, is kind of to, to do it ourselves. So we thought we'd, we'd just grow, we'd grow sales with manufacturing and manufacturing with sales. Yeah. Um, in, obviously, keeping things in-house is always ideal, mm. right? Um, if we, like, relate it to tech, it's mm. your tech team not being based offshore yeah. is based in-house. So you can be right there with them overseeing mm -hmm. it. It's always the ideal. But what comes with that is, is the expense and logistics and everything else that goes with it. How, yes. <laughs> yeah, how big, of, how big, what's the most difficult thing about it? Is it finding a premises? Is it getting the equipment? Is it finding staff? Is it finding the right process? What is the most difficult thing um, that you went through doing this? Gosh, all of it. All um, of it's the same yeah. amount of difficulty. Uh, no, I guess it's um, the challenge. So, so if you had money, if you had all the money in the world, you could tomorrow go out to, you know, really experienced food processing equipment manufacturers and say, I want to do this, go make me that. And if you had the budget to spend, you could get whatever you wanted. Okay. But the challenge of being a startup and going, well, actually, I don't have any money to spend. I don't want to spend anything. I want it to be super efficient mm. and I want it not to cost me anything. Yeah. And that's the way it has to be. That's really challenging because you're constantly trying to, um, you know, look at what your slowest step is and say, how can we do that better? And then mm. it's sometimes like really unexpected things. Like I initially was quite focused on the actual process itself. And then it turned out that our, our sort of rate limiting step was actually the washing of the trays that goes in the dryer. And so then we had to come up with like a creative way to wash the trays yeah. quicker, but without, um, you know, one, our trays are too big for like commercial washing machines, two commercial washing machines are 10 grand. We're not spending that. So mm. um, it's just these little things that you kind of don't think, gosh, a washing machine for trays, that's going to be, you know, yeah. that's going to take your team an extra two hours in the morning to wash trays. Um, so it's kind of constantly looking at where the hurdles are, what's taking the most time, what's the least efficient and mm. constantly trying to kind of innovate that and, and, you know, make it better, come up with something to do faster 
better, yeah. easier, cheaper, all that sort of stuff. Sustainability is a is a theme, and you know, with this brand and yes, with you, yeah. and you're really knowledgeable about it. We spoke off camera. Does it end up more expensive? Is the question? Is, is it obviously because from a consumer mm. point of view, not me, just consumers yeah. in general, right? Going and, and they say buying organic is mm -hmm. more expensive and, and, and things like this, but it's better for you. Yeah. Is it the same that comes to manufacturing a product? Is being, you know, using, you know, wind or solar or other methods mm. more expensive for the trade off with sustainability? So in the long term, so I should say first, the, the, um, so the product will very shortly be manufactured on 100% renewable energy in, in the facility that we're just about to move into. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing that by a, a means of a wood chip powered um, biomass boiler to create the heat to dry the snacks. Um, they're, they're sort of dried, like basically dehydrated. Yeah. And then we will have a generator that runs on hydrogenated vegetable oil to um, provide the electricity for the fans and the rest of the equipment. And in the long run, the wood chip biomass boiler will actually, um, it's roughly sort of net, net on, on sort of power costs or, or energy costs because at the moment there's still the renewable heat incentive, which um, pays for every kilowatt hour of power that you produce with the boiler. So rather than having to spend on electricity or oil or gas to run, um, to run the system, mm. it, it I don't remember the exact figures, but it comes. It actually lowers the the power cost once you've got the really? kit in there, and we've sort of been quite lucky and been able to sort of work out the capex of the boiler itself, shared with um, other people in the facility that will be using it. So that's quite handy. Um, on the hydrogenated vegetable oil side, there there were government um, there was government help for that as well, and that ran out in February and it's yet to be reintroduced, but for the moment we've found a producer that, so, so then the producers have gone and blended hydrogenated vegetable oil with diesel okay. and we've managed to find some pure stuff um, and we're gonna just kind of swallow the extra 10 cents a liter yeah. cost. Um, so I guess that, that really means in the long run, it's actually not that bad. Um, and I think it's one of these things where as the, um, as the equipment becomes more and more available, mm. the CapEx costs start to come down. So I guess we're in a lucky position where we're not moving into an existing facility where we're ripping out things that are yeah. still, still good. We're actually just building it from the ground up. And I think that in terms of both the renewables and in terms of things like our, our packaging um, and the process itself are really what's saved us. Because if we had to get rid of things that an investment had already been made in, that would just, I, I yeah, think that's, course. you know, that's the challenge for existing big brands is they've got all of their their equipment and their process running to, to change that and on stuff that, that still has years of usable life left is a very expensive mm. business proposition. And so in that way, we're, we're quite lucky. So we can make the sustainability more ha happen on a more um, economic basis. Of course. It's interesting. When you do a product like this, mm. I think, you know, especially with a cool you know, product like this, people look, people tend to look into it more than when they buy, you know, a regular packet of yeah. Crisp, which I don't want to mention on the suit. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? It is, so yeah. if I buy a packet of the tube and working in, I, you're not going to look yeah. into where is this manufactured? And yeah, how what, are they doing it? How are they doing this? Mm. You just don't because you just you don't You even, know that it's just traditional. But I know yeah. personally if I mm. buy something that's that's a super cool product, organic, mm. whatever, mm. I, you look into the company more and mm. you're more of an evangelist for the brand mm -hmm. if you're a regular. Well, hopefully. Yeah, but if you're a regular <laughs> purchaser, of it, you are. So it's really interesting. And I think you, for congratulations, you're, you got into Whole Thanks. Foods. Yes, yep, a um, couple, couple weeks ago, so watch out for that tower of 600 cans just inside the door at the Piccadilly Whole Foods, but it's, it's in all of them. It's so amazing. That's, that's quite and exciting. What do you think, we're, we're nearly out of time, mm. but I really want to notice, mm. what do you think sealed the deal with Whole Foods? Was it, was it what we just talked about, and was it the, from, from start to finish, the sustainability of it? Um, or was it because it just looks really cool? <laughs> oh, I think it was the taste of the product. It's, it's got like a really intense taste to it, but it's also really healthy. Mm. So without any refined carbs in it at all, it's, it's like literally just eating a salad, except for it's in the convenience of crisp and the flavors are super intense. Mm. So I think, you know, I think the sustainability helps. And actually I was in a store doing a sampling the other day and one of the guys in the shop did come up and say, oh, actually, I think your packaging is one of the coolest things. 
things. But um, but yeah, I think probably for the buyers at the end of the day, we're selling a snack product. It's taste that wins out. Amazing. Well, look, massive congratulations. Thank People you. should watch out for it in Whole Foods. <laughs> and definitely check it out. But I really appreciate coming in. Thank Cheers. you. Thank Cheers. Thank you very much.